Hey guys, um, I'm Jose and this is tutorial number 13 and we're going to see how to integrate um, the Python script in Rhino 5 with Grasshopper. Um, so, I mean, obviously this is still a beta version and it's still under development, but it seems that Grasshopper would be supported at least by some plugins for now, but we'll see if that comes into Grasshopper fully. So, if you just Google Python Grasshopper, you'll find that um, this is in the Grasshopper website. You'll find the link to Food for Rhino website where you can actually download the GH Python component for Grasshopper. If you don't know what Grasshopper is, just do some research on that. And and there's plenty of videos and tutorials online already. Um, so if you're interested in it, just uh, look for it and you'll find plenty of information. So here you can download the GH component for Python and Rhino 5, right? So go ahead, download. When you download it already, you probably have to install it and then you can, you need to put the GH Python basically in this route. If you go to program files, Rhino 4, plugins, grasshopper, components, and here you see that I just added my GH Python. Uh, uh, file, right? So in that way, your when you open Grasshopper, and that's what we're gonna do now. Grasshopper. Here we go. Uh, we can see that we have a Python script editor, right? We must just one button here, create a Python module, and um, and this is really great. Um, so we can actually keep on writing Python script, but if we want some control over some of the variables, we can actually use that. Um, so I'm going to just go ahead and produce one of these guys. And we'll see, let's open up the constant of the script by double clicking, and we'll see that um, it's quite a bit of, it's, it's a sample script that comes in. So you can delete all this, all this stuff. But it's saying, okay, just if x, that is one of the inputs, uh, it's not provided, just make it 24 and then make a list and then run a for loop and do a bunch of circles in a sound wave, right? Um, so how many circles is, I mean, is it going to do? Just by default 24, but if you provide an x, it will vary, right? So the for, for loop is being dynamically activated by the input. Uh, and the rest stuff is pretty simple, just a line and uh, point and Basically, building up an array, right? Okay, we have an issue there. Sorry. Um, so let's see. Uh, if we press OK, we can already see this script running. Right? So it's doing 24 circles uh, in a sine wave fashion, right? So we could control the number of circles by putting some values here in x, right? So let's go ahead and build a slider and turn, make this slider type to integer, right? And the second I'm going to just edit the slider and type uh, something like 100, right? That's good. So I have a slider. And then I could just connect this to x, right? What you'll see now is that the components are thread so it's basically throwing an error and saying, hey, there's something not really working here. So we could see the error message and we'd say there's a solution problem. Um, so basically the problem that is happening is just that it doesn't know which kind of variable I'm, I'm putting in, right? So what I need to do is just, I mean, this might be tricky to show, but uh, yeah, you probably kind of see it, but it's here, yeah, I think this is actually being captured by the screen. So you have a, if you right click on X, you'll see that you can do a type hint saying what kind of type is this variable, right? So we need to specify in this case that it's an integer and that would make the component become gray again. So that's active and that's fine, right? So we have those circles and now we can just move the script back and forth and it's basically calculating the script again and just changing the values. So it's a real-time kind of update of, of the script. So that's pretty, pretty neat. 
and you just change and check some of your variables inside a script. And this will happen, it will work fine if you, the script is not too heavy. I mean, obviously, if you start running a script that might take minutes uh, to calculate, you might not have that real time, of course, so it will be very slow. So, uh, for simple things, it's actually quite handy. Um, let's see now how can we actually do some changes here, right? Mm, so let's go ahead and double click inside the component and, and see that, for instance, the circle itself is defined by here by the 0 0.3. So we could use Y. Um, a second input to um, to control that component, right? So let's put a slider, in this case it's a float, um, to control Y. And double click here and just replace this 0 0.3 by Y, right? So now you'll see if we look at the circles here, the size of the circles is being controlled by the slider as well. So one more thing we'll see in this video, and maybe the last thing before we start kind of bringing in our own kind of scripts into, in, in this component, is that we can just right click, go into the input manager, and add a new variable to the list. Let's say a new input. So we can actually not stay just with two inputs, but maybe any number of inputs, and we can name them the way we want. And you'll see that we get back that error Basically, it overrides the hints that we have uh, created, so you have to do that again, which is a bit annoying. But so we can just go right click, hint, integer, and you'll see that it's working again. Um, right, so what can we control with that? Maybe set is just something like a divided by set, like the sine wave function. Uh, and we are having an error because we don't have any set yet. Uh, so let's see. So yeah, we have something like the sine wave. We are kind of controlling the height of the sine wave here with that value. Uh, and you can see that we're increasing the number of points so, and so forth. Very simple example. We're going to just see how to change all this stuff for our own scripts, the ones that we've been working on. Uh, but yeah, that's it. Uh, Rhino 5 Grasshopper using Python components.